Hi, welcome to Fostering Resilience. I'm KJ Foster. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some more information about my upcoming move from the US to Europe. And this is not just not just my move, but my husband and I are moving. We are retiring from our jobs as of October 15th, and our goal is to move to Europe, specifically to France. But we are open, depending upon actually how our visa application goes because what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video are those first steps. So information about how to go about applying for a long stay visa because that is literally the first step that you need to take if you plan on spending any significant amount of time in Europe. You need to apply for a long stay visa. So this video is part how to and then part vlog because I'm going to be sharing with you some footage of our experience going down to Coral Gables, Miami and applying for those long stay visas. Now, let me just say that I have some significant experience, I would say, in creating videos. I create videos, primarily educational videos for individuals and family members who are impacted by substance abuse and other addiction issues. I also create meditations, but I am not <laughs> so familiar with creating vlogs. So this is my very first attempt at doing anything that is really like vlog-like. So keep that in mind. I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to look back and go, Oh my gosh, KJ, that was like horrible. But I, I'm a work in progress like we all are. And the only way that you can learn is to start doing. So just keep that in mind as you're watching the video. All right, here we go. All right. So I'm going to walk you through very quickly what we did to find out what was needed in terms of applying for a long stay visa. You could also apply for a short stay visa. There are short stay visas, at least for France. So the first, the first step is finding out what's required and what's possible in the country where you want to go. So I just put in visa um, while well, I was searching England there just to see if there was a difference. But really, if you just put in visa application wherever you want to go, France, we put in France and the very first thing that pops up is the place where we needed to go, which is start your visa application online. And so I went here to this website and I opened an account, which is free. You just, you know, you select my account. It asks you to put in your email address and to create a password, and then you have your own account. And what's important about that is whatever information you begin, it will automatically save it to your account so that you don't lose it. And then there's a, like, I guess you would call it a wizard that you can go through to find out what type of a visa you need to apply for. You click on, do you need a visa? This is where the wizard is. Okay. And then you put in your nationality, your age. I'm an American. My age is I have no shame about that. I'm 58. It asks you, do you join or travel with a family member from the EU? Which is my answer to that was no. So your stay, your place, and this is where it can be confusing because in the first box you put in American, but then in this next box, I had to go down and search out United States. So here you put in United States, which is that's where I'm applying for the visa. And this is where you put in the type of visa that you're seeking. So I put in a long stay visa and then I put in the destination of France and then I put in the type of travel document. So for me, it's an ordinary passport. And then I searched and it told me what I needed to do. So if I search that, it says reminder of your application, reminder of your application, you need a visa. So it tells you all of the things that you need. It asks you then about your plans and the purpose of your stay. So you just follow all of those prompts and then you go back to the homepage and you start the process of the application. So you go to first, do you need a visa? And then you go to the second step, which is start your application. 
And this is where you're going to put in all the information about um, see, it's telling me, do I want to access my visa application because I already did this? So you'll just follow the steps of, let me go back because it's telling me to access my application because I've already submitted an application. And then like it says here, you can do a grouping of people, which is what I tried to do with my husband and I, but I'll explain a little later how I became a bit confused about that. One of the most important things to realize and remember that even if you create, let's say multiple visas under your account, which is what I did. So I created my own account, I created multiple applications under my account, one for myself, one for, for my husband. And then what you need to do, what's required to do is to, before you can even fully submit the application, you have to obtain an appointment to go and submit all of the information that is required for your visa. And I did that and I, I applied for one appointment. So let me show you where you need to go to then schedule the appointment that you need to go in and apply for the visa. Again, important thing to remember is that each person, each visa application needs their own appointment. And that doesn't matter if you applied under this group status, you still, each individual needs their own separate appointment. So next up, I'm going to share with you some of the footage I shot when we went to go apply for our long stay visa, which again, remember, this is my very first vlog, so it's not going to be anything too extensive or fancy. And I'll join you back here after that to show you next steps in this process. All right, so we are headed out to the passport office. We have all of our information ready to go. Tony's looking very handsome. I'm wearing the dress that I actually wore while we were in Paris in May for good luck. So here we go. Bye. disregard all the junk that's in our back seat from our storage facility. All right, so how do you think that it went? Well, I think you snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. How so? Well, you know, I think it plays right into this book that I'm reading that tells you that if you go to France, don't find anything to be straightforward because if they tell you turn right uh, at the next block, it might not be the next block, it might be two blocks from here, or if it tells you you can rent a car here, you might not be able to rent a car. And in this case, uh, we were under the impression that it was going to be just one application, two applications, but one account. One appointment. One appointment. Because it was under one account. It right. was a group of visas, and like a grouping of our two visas. And initially that caused them to say no. And they kind of booted me out. Yeah. So and when we so when we got there, just to clarify, they said we only have one appointment, so we're only taking one of you, which was me because I made it's under my account. So I was trying to explain to them, well, but we have one account on both of our visas are un under one account. And they said nope. We have to uh oh traffic. We have we have to take just you and Tony wasn't even able to come in with me. He was banished <laughs> to the lobby. Where there's no place to sit. Okay. And they don't really want you there. That's probably why there's no place to sit. And so I stood around and waited with other family members of other people who, who um, a young lady was coming for a student visa. She was 18 and her mother came with her and, and these appointments are so hard to get this is why uh, we were concerned these appointments are so hard to get 
this mother and daughter had flown from New York uh, to get this appointment because in New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, there was no appointments for three months. So that's how uh, that, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, this isn't going to happen for me today, and we're going to have to make another appointment. And I even went online and tried to make an appointment, but because the account's in KJ's name, I couldn't do anything. And so I just, you know, killed time for about an hour and 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, eventually, uh, I got a phone call from KJ, and she had, um, for lack of a better I word, am charmed now. Well, you're, I was going to say sweet talk, but I guess <laughs> charmed is just as good. Um, and you know, the fact that she didn't explode uh, like some people would, and that she was, and that she was so prepared. KJ was incredibly pre prepared. Had everything on the ball just to hand them as they asked it. Um, she. Uh, she got them to the point where they they allowed me to come in and do it. Well, and I was really concerned as I was sitting there because I was hearing them say that it takes between one and four weeks to get your passport back, to get the approval or disapproval. Hopefully it won't be a disapproval, but to get um, to confirm everything. So I start calculating in my head oh my gosh, how long is it going to take for you to get a, another appointment? And and the one guy was telling me they were booked up through the end of August. So then I'm thinking, okay, if you don't get in until September and then it takes four weeks, that could run into, you know, Tony might not have his passport for us to go. At that point, I was thinking yeah. you might not get the passport back in time for us to go to France on October 16th. But ultimately, what they gave, they gave us a copy of the passport. And I think the purpose of that is that in an emergency, that can be used. Right. If I you had to leave the country for some reason. I guess so. But I'm glad we didn't have to figure it out. And I started to get a sense that maybe this might be happening when she started asking me, one woman said to me, so do you have copies of everything for your husband as well? Did you bring all those copies with you? And I said yes, and I think because so many of the other people didn't have everything that they request that you bring, and even though they don't turn you away for that, it makes their job harder because then they have to copy things and you have to maybe go out and go on the internet and try and find things. So it just makes their job a lot easier when you're prepared and you have everything. And then she started asking me how to spell your middle name. And I started to think to myself, oh my gosh, I think this is gonna happen. I think they're going to allow you to come in and do this. And they did. So I just think it's another one of those God moments. I actually those... I actually had a, had a thought about 45 minutes into it because one person that went through literally was finished in 10 minutes and I was thinking well why is it taking so long with her I bet KJ sweet talking them into, into let, letting me come in and about 15 minutes later my phone rang and that's exactly what happened but you know what's interesting about that is that I did not say a word about you coming in not a word I was just nice I just had everything prepared and I answered all their questions and I gave them all the information and the woman said that she decided to allow you to come in because I was so nice. So, that felt good. Because really, truth be told, when I think about some of the clients we've had and when things you know, go wrong or, or just people I've even observed where things don't go their way or something happens that they didn't expect and they don't get what they want, people can be mean like well, not if, nice and if you're in south florida and you go in a restaurant almost every time you go in a restaurant you see someone who's rude to the wait staff mm -hmm. who treats them badly yeah and so that's a you know that's probably something that they see to a greater degree yeah because they're dealing with that every day they're dealing right. with people customer service so i'm really grateful for the staff there. They were amazingly wonderful. So I'm grateful. We're gonna go celebrate. We're gonna go have some dinner at one of our favorite restaurants. Do you wanna say what it is? If you like. 
Sure. Gianni's. Gianni's and Gianni's and Pompano Pompano Beach. Pompano Pompano on Beach. On Atlantic Boulevard. So we're gonna go eat some great Italian food. Okay, so that was our experience applying for our long stay visa, and this is how we booked that appointment. We went to this website, vfsglobal.com. It should refer you when you go through the visa application process. Once you reach the end stage, it will then prompt you to go and book an appointment, and it should provide you with the link to book that appointment. So this starts with going down here and putting in where you are applying from. So I'm applying from the United States and I'm going to France. And then it's going to take you to, oh, one of the things that you're going to need is travel insurance, but I would wait and be prompted. We were prompted after we made the appointment, it gives you all these links and I would use that link to make sure that you get the right travel insurance. That's one of the, there are many requirements of information that you need to bring with you to your appointment and having travel insurance is, is one of those things that you need to have. So this is where uh, it, it shows you the book an appointment, right? So this is where you go, you then click on book an appointment and it says, it's give, it's prompting me to go back and fill out a, a visa because it's not indicating that I've done that yet. But this is where you're going to be prompted to go. Once you get to that stage in the visa application, you'll be prompted to go and book your appointment. So depending upon when you're planning this, when you intend to go, this is something that you should be doing as soon as possible because one of the things that Tony noted in our experience was that we met a, a girl and her mother who had traveled from, I forget where she traveled from, Tony mentioned it in the video. She flew from New York, I believe it was, to come down here because New York's system was booked out for months and she needed to get her application in in order to go to school within the, the allotted time frame. So this is something that can take a long time. So you want to absolutely keep that in mind. So there you go. Those are the steps that you need to take to apply for a long stay visa. And also in case I failed to mention it, it takes approximately, we were told it takes approximately one to four weeks to get our passports back and get the determination of whether we've been approved for the long stay visa or not. And so say a prayer for us in that regard. And I'm praying, praying, hoping that we get approved for our visas. We have been told, as far as we understand it, the visitor visas, especially for people who are retiring like ourselves, are some of the easiest visas to get approved for because we're basically putting money into the French economy. We are not going there attempting to take jobs away from any French people or anything like that. We are absolutely completely putting money back into their economy. So that's why it's generally an easier process than maybe applying for other types of visas so we're hoping and praying that we get approved so again would appreciate your prayers and thank you for sticking around until the end of the video if you have any questions about that process please let me know and i will definitely keep you posted in terms of when we hear about the decision regarding our long stay visas so again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Have a very beautiful and a blessed day.